It's glowing red hot. We're adding full load to that car. We've had this car for about five months now. We've been driving it a fair bit and we've got a whole lot of data, what we've managed to gather from this car and learn from it. Four cylinder variation that's in the 79 series. There's a lot of speculation around this motor and how good it's going to be. A couple of things we have seen some problems with. Factory air boxes, very small, very restrictive. Also our heat exchanger. We have the factory heat exchanger in this car at the moment. And today we're gonna to be running through some testing and understanding of the temperatures and how they affect with load. So we're gonna jump in the car um, and we'll put it as it is standard at the moment and see what the temperatures go to and how long we can hold you know, our maximum load torque for. And and then we will get it off, get our new heat exchanger in, and we'll see the difference. So this car has a JMAC GVM upgrade. It still is the leaf rear end that has the diff correction in it. Um, it's got some method wheels on it. It's pretty similar as far as weight would go to a normal 79 series. It's got a Buffalo tray on the back, which is a steel tray. Pretty much everything about this car at the moment is relative what you would see in the normal world as far as the 79 series goes. Obviously, we don't have a canopy on the back. We don't have dual batteries. We don't have water tanks. We don't have bigger fuel tanks. We don't have any of that gear in the car. So the car is only simulated here at the moment which will be on the dyno giving it load as it will towing a heavy load not so much of the weight of the vehicle so that's what we're going to simulate now so what we're logging is engine speed we've got our intake temperature um, which is basically what our math reads from the air coming into the engine. As far as our coolant temp goes, and the ones that we really want to see is our charge temp before and after the cooler. Um, so we're logging them as well. Uh, we're going to go up, get this car up to speed. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to time two minutes where I'm going to hold the continual torque for, and we're going to have that situated on the dyno, and we'll hold that. And what we want to see with the log is how hot we can get to. now. This is simulating pretty much uh, a very heavy load. So it would be about like, you know, a three and a half, four ton trailer uh, traveling at 80 Ks an hour, uh, where our engine speed is gonna be around that 2000 RPM. And what we wanted to see is what's the temperature that it gets to, um, and it sort of stabilizes that, and if it keeps climbing. If it keeps climbing, what's gonna happen is we're gonna get this reduction in power, very similar to we see in other models of the Tortoise do this. So let's see what we're at. So, to start off with, we're sitting here stationary at 83 degrees in coolant temp. Our intake temps are for coming into this dyno room at the moment is 36 degrees, so it's not a cold day. Our charge temp at the moment, 54 degrees coming in and around about 39 degrees going out. So, you know, there is a bit of cooling happening there at the moment, but um, we're gonna run this through now and we'll, we'll see how we go. So we're up to speed now, we're at about that sort of 80 kilometers an hour. We're gonna be in fourth gear. Um, the converter is locked at the moment, so we're gonna keep that converter locked so we don't have any interference from the transmission coming through. That way we know we can be as consistent as possible. All right, so cool temps still around that 83 degrees. Charge temp at the moment is actually quite high. It's around that 92 degrees. Um, after it's 48 degrees, which is, it's doing its job. It's actually not too bad. All right, so we're gonna start here. Um, as you can see on the dyno, we're only around that 50 Nm of torque. We're not really putting any load into it. So we're gonna do the same thing here um, once we put the heat exchanger in, so we'll see a, a comparable difference. So we're gonna start now. All right, so I've got my foot flat at the moment and the car's producing 380, 390 Newton meters at the wheels at the moment. As you can see, straight away we're already up to 166 degrees charge temp. The intercooler temp going into the engines around 65 degrees and climbing. Our coolant temp is climbing also, it's around 89 degrees. Still has the 43 degrees intake temp that's coming into the engine. We're sitting at that 2300 RPM. And we're sitting at you know 24 pounds of boost at the moment. This is all factory boost targets. Still climbing, so that's a minute that's gone past. All right, so coolant temp's now getting around that 98 degrees, and we're a minute and a half in. The temp's around that 83 degrees into, 188 charge temp, 52 degrees intake temp, so it's definitely starting to heat up in this room. We're starting to lose a little bit of torque now, it's starting to come down. I can feel it starting to drop car. We're down about that 330. There's two minutes that's gone past. 
And this is like simulating what it would be like to tow something pretty big and heavy, especially 80 Ks with you know strong headwind and you're gonna be pretty much buried in this thing, especially at standard power levels. All right, so we're around about 200 degrees intake temp. All right, so having a look at this log at the moment, what's really interesting is you can see the temperature starting to climb pretty much overall with everything. Our coolant temp was 96 degrees. We can see the reduction in torque as the torque was starting to reduce down. We start off with that sort of 350 and we'll end up being that 320 so that you know the torque's starting to reduce. You start to do this on a, a long trip and it just starts to slowly come down further and further as it gets heat soaked. You know, we did this run for exactly three minutes. If you have a look here, our intake temps in the room at the moment around 60 degrees. So that is something that you'll probably find on the open road um, would be a little bit different. However, um, that's what we're getting out of the engine bay with the air that we've got. We've still got our fans on and rushing air with fans extracting out of this room. Um, so those temps are definitely getting high in the engine bay. It's probably a lot to do with the fact that you've got a DPF in the same area and there's generating a lot of heat, a lot of load there. What's really interesting here is our intake temps. So as far as uh, before the intercooler, got up to 200 degrees. Um, that's sort of where it stabilized. That's at 24 pounds of boost. It's not a huge intake temperature for a turbo. The 200 degrees is probably what I would expect to see, especially at that boost level. Obviously, now that we've come up with a turbocharged temp, going into the motor is 80 degrees. So um, this is on fairly standard boost levels. Um, there's no tuning in this car at the moment. We're doing this to simulate what it would be like uh, for a standard car. So what I want to do now is just increase the power level and show you what happens with the temperature and see the increase once we start increasing that. Okay, so we're just gonna do the same test again. And what that test was on was on standard um, form. So now we're going to do it on the tune form, just get up temp. And we're just gonna see what our temperatures start to go to and see where we stabilize at. Okay, so now our boost level is up another four or five PSI from factory. We're producing a hell of a lot more torque. We've got about another 120 newton meters. Uh, roughly, so 450. Have a look at our temperatures. And the thing is, you've got to remember is that we just did a, a run at three minutes of steady state. Uh, we're doing that back to back now with a higher output. So we're going to see an increase in temperature here. And this is standard cooler. So already we're at sort of that 207. So we know that our turbo is producing a lot higher temperature. Charge temp coming into the engine is around that 84, 85, it's going up. Our coolant temp is up around that sort of 100 degrees at the moment. Uh, intake temps in here are around 56 degrees. And now because we're getting around just over that 100 degrees in coolant temp, it's starting to reduce the power. We're down about that 350. So we're down to that factory power level now, purely because you know, we're doing this to try and conserve the motor, to keep it, you know, cool. So as the temperatures increase, we're pulling this down. So this is as cool as about consistency. So running this test out, you can see we're roughly around that 370, 380, 400 newton meters. So we've lost about 50 newton meters so far. We're sitting stabilized at about 102, 101. Charge temp, look, still, you know, 209. Going into the engines, 84 degrees. The intake temps now rise where they were before, around that 64 degrees. Still the same speed as far as uh, engine speed and road speed is. So now we're two minutes. So we've got one more minute left. Our charge temp, which is the, you know, the temperature coming out of the turbo is definitely still increasing. And our power is pretty much getting close now. We're only about 10 newton meters above factory at the moment, slowly getting down. And that's because we're reducing the fueling and the boost as the temperatures increased. One thing that we need to make sure of is that we want to have the power, but it's got to be consistent and we need to make sure those temperatures are within check. So it's about having the power, but being consistent with it. That is what these modifications are for, it's being consistent. All right, we're nearly up to three minutes now. All right, let's see where we ended up. In the end there, we're only around 20 newton meters higher than we were from uh, our factory boost levels. Um, obviously we started the first minute and a half of the run a lot, lot higher. Um, obviously after that, it started to gradually get back down and, and that's a safety protection that's built into the ECU um, that is not modified in a way, so it works really, really well and conserves your engine and makes sure everything's in check. 
Um, having a look at our temperatures, intake temp, you know, um, in this room at the moment was 68 degrees, so definitely got a, a few more degrees higher this run. Obviously that's heat soaking the whole area. Uh, coolant temp stabilized around that 102. Um, the turbo temperature was uh, 82 degrees. So, you know, that's definitely um, still um, warm, but it's not bad. It's, you know, the cooler and everything's doing their job. If we look at the intake temps, you know, we got to 211 degrees is what we ended up getting to. Um, so definitely running the extra boost pressure gets those temperatures a little bit higher. So what will be really interesting to see now, once we upgrade the heat exchanger, we've got a larger volume of water plus a bigger surface area to cool. Um, it'll be interesting to see what those temperatures do. So Jetty J79 series, this is our heat exchanger for it. Obviously we've just been on the dyno in stock form. We're gonna get the boys to fit it up now into the car, put this new unit in. Basically where the factory one sits, it all fits in there really well. It's got a lot of clearance. It was definitely a fairly technical kit to get sorted, but now it's there. Um, it looks great in place and it's, you know, it all works just like the factory one would, but has a larger capacity. Um, so we're gonna put this in now. We'll run through the data and we'll see what we end up with. excited to see these differences um, so we're going to go through now and run this up start the timer we're going through we're just checking what's going on at the moment intake temps much the same as yesterday coming in the ambient temperature already you know our intake charge temp is around 62 degrees which is already a lot less but we'll give it some time as it's not stabilizing, it is creeping up now. Coolant temp's around 95 degrees, uh, about 75 degrees charge temp. Remember, we've got our foot flat here. I'm in fourth gear, the converter's locked, producing around that 380 newton meters at the moment. What I want to see is that the temperatures basically stabilize. So that's two minutes gone past. It's amazing this thing, it actually cools itself quite well. Considering this is full load, this is definitely where the car's, you know, trying to do as much as it can. All right, so two and a half minutes gone past. The coolant temp now is sort of stabilized. We're about that 98 degrees. Charge temp is definitely stabilized. So this is the temperature after the intercool, after we've cooled it down, is 82 degrees which is pretty good considering of the heat that we've got coming through this thing at the moment. And there we go, that's three minutes, 15. All right, so having a look at over that, we can definitely start to see our increases of all the temperatures and so forth. Um, if we get out of the car right now, I reckon, you see the retarder, it's glowing red hot. We're adding full load to that car and that's how it glows like that. So that's what we're showing you. That's, there's three minutes, 15 seconds there. All right, so we've finished doing the run with the heat exchanger on board. We've got our log here, so we're pretty keen to go back and have a look at that log, analyze it against yesterday with what we did with the standard cooler in place and see if there's any difference in temperature. Um, already I can see some of the temperatures starting to stabilize a lot earlier, um, which is a good thing. Um, we went for three minutes and 15 seconds. We went a little bit over our, our three minute time. I got sidetracked, um, but uh, it'll give us a good indication of where we are. Yeah, we'll do a bit of a summary and um, I'll show you the results. We got the four cylinder 79 off the dyno. We've done our testing on a heat exchanger. Obviously we did our testing first with the stock heat exchanger in place and then we had our modified um, one in there. The real interesting thing is, is that uh, our intake temperatures have stabilized around the 82 degrees. So they haven't actually changed from where we were before to where we are now. So we're gonna to have to go back to the book and have a look at the reasons why that was the case. Um, I believe it's down to the duty cycle of the motor. You can see that the motor will switch on and off. Um, so we're not sure if it's a flow issue yet or what happens there. Um, interesting enough, we actually did see a reduction in coolant temp, which is debatable for why that is. Um, but uh, we're gonna have to look a little bit more into the data and work out why this is the case. Um, so 
We're gonna jump through, work out what it is. Um, we'll have a play around with the duty, increasing the duty on the pump, trying to get a bit more flow happening, see if that helps reduce those temperatures down. Um, but uh, stay tuned, we'll uh, keep you up to date with what we're doing there. Um, but this is just part of the process. It sometimes, you know, it works easy first time. Sometimes you gotta go further and understand why. Uh, but this is where we're at. So um, yeah, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll have something ready to roll.